Konami Studios. Department of Truth, issue number four. Just when I thought I was going to have like a nice, relaxing book in this world, this, this book just went too far. It went way too crazy, it went way too realistic, and it's getting way too intense and good, man. It's literally freaking me out how good this book is. I'm just like, there is so much time and dedication and thought put into this story that I'm just obsessed with it. I love every second of it. It's so good, so awesome. Everyone should read Department of Truth. You're not going to be disappointed. Let me tell you when I say that, you are not going to be disappointed if you start reading this book. Especially if you like some like random conspiracy theory shit. It's going to drive you crazy how good this book is, man. So we open up this book and we are listening to a conversation from two men in a, in like a, just some, I guess it's just like some random living room or hotel room area, but they are talking about like this, this folder that was given to these men and it just has a bunch of weird information in it. They don't really understand. It's just like all this stuff about like the importance of truth and how the world needs to know the truth and truth is like a weapon and people always want this data to be admitted to them and they always want to know everything that's real and once an idea starts it kind of just becomes reality in that regard so we don't know any of the information that's actually in the folder yet but we do know that it has this logo of like a black hat which is something we've seen in previous issues of the book and it's like oh that's like the opposing agency to the department of truth so they're trying to figure out what what does it mean what is this information here and what does it mean so we see that on a monitor it is lee harvey oswald who is watching these guys and he's with one of the younger ladies there whose name escapes me at the moment i don't know if they say the name in the book but she's kind of like egging him on like mm, man you're just mad that this stuff doesn't work like we're spying on them from every location in the room you you'll calm down if you can't see them right away and they kind of like she starts to antagonize him a little bit like oh yeah you know i get 50 bucks from hunky every time you, you yell at me and he's like yeah well maybe we'll split the profits on that and i'll go full angry on you and she's like yeah okay Sounds like you're getting mad at me. And we see Cole's kind of stumbling in the room. He's got everybody's coffee and he's walking in and you see that Lee Harvey is just like, oh, well, look who finally decided to show up. If you get your act together, I'll put you back on like a, on a way mission. You won't just be here with me. And it's kind of an interesting idea being presented here. And I, I like it a lot because Cole's just kind of being like, you know, I got so many questions and you're not letting me ask them. And even though you said you would, you're not letting me. I think it's very interesting. What's going What's going on there? It's really fun to see. So you, you start to understand like, all right, you know, your whole generation, you just want all these questions and you don't really, you're not looking at like the bigger picture here, man. Everything's connected. Because Cole kind of says he wants to work like full time on the star faced man. Like, like, I guess case it would be on the case for that guy. And he doesn't want to hurt any more children. But the idea is like, Cole, you can't just work on that, man. We're working on the bigger picture here because the bigger picture is everything's connected like a conspiracy theory. So shut up and listen to what I'm about to say. So in that briefcase, well, I don't mean briefcase. So in that file that those guys have, there's something in there that could destroy the world and bring a lot of information. It's, this whole issue is kind of about like the importance of truth and information and how information does this really interesting thing. So we kind of get like a lecture on like how once somebody believes something, their subconscious tells them like that's a little bit different. Cole brings up like who killed JFK and there's like all these other thoughts that go into that. Was it the mob? Was it the CIA? Was it a lone gunman? Like who was responsible for that killing? And we don't really go back to that, but he's using that as an example to tell Cole, like, well, take this for example, Barack Obama, you know, he's the first black president, and that is different than what we've seen before for a president. So there's some, there's some people who take that idea and they're like, well, that's not realistic. So he's obviously born in Kenya. And even though you can prove he wasn't, some people will believe that, that he's not actually an American citizen. So now that we have that idea in place, they're not racist. They're just people who are like this doesn't feel right than what we've seen before so we have to dig a little deeper and dig up more information so they go they cut back to what these guys are talking about in the uh in the the room over there they're looking at the phone they're like what is this information this is all crazy there's no way any of this is real but there's like 12 cases in the folder and they kind of run down all the cases and what they are and this is where i'm like this is tynan just going a little too hard, man. I won't run down every single individual thing that they said in each of like the files, but it's pretty much like we're changing Barack Obama's birth certificate to where he was born. We're seeing that there's certain people in power that gave the Clintons and the Bushes like their administration and all that stuff and how it kind of all connects back to the one person who owns all of the power in the world. And that person we are saying is Jeffrey Epstein. <laughs> and you're like, fuck, man. And we do see that the final, like, uh, 
the, the final like file in the folder is the confession from Jeffrey Epstein before he is killed, before his apparent suicide. And you're like, fuck, dude. Wow. That's a dark place to go. So now that we got all the information that's in the files, Lee is like, all right, cool. Now tell me, what is the story that's being told here? What is the conspiracy that's being brought up here? So now that we know all the information, Cole kind of goes on this thing. Like The theory is that none of uh, the American elected officials are chosen. They all are like controlled by these people that lead multi-million dollar industries and are like military and industrial complex businessmen. They gave them all these positions of power. The Clintons and Bushes were puppets of the deep state. And it's it just like all this stuff leading them to there and a lot of them being controlled by jeffrey epstein i know bomb is kind of like the antichrist you throw him into the mix and it gets everything riled up so things kind of become this idea against like the left and the extremists and we go after these foreign countries and you're like what are you talking about it's it's so insane and i i love every second of you like that's such a really fucked up story that they're throwing in here and of course it's it's fake but you're like that's true like holy shit that's creepy it all comes back to Jeffrey Epstein. <laughs> and you're like, yep. Fuck, man. <laughs> That's creepy. I, I really like it, though. It, it's such a good and fascinating idea that, like, everything just comes back to this one man who controls more power than anybody. And that it's realistic, in a sense. Because they even say it in the book. How is it different than, like, William Randolph Hearst and Pulitzer? How did he, like, control all the newspapers so nobody would slander him? How did he become that guy? It all comes back to that. And even when you can control the presidency, how are they going to do anything about you? It's insane. So the idea comes into play like Black Hat gave these guys these files. And so something about that is like, what is their angle here? What are they actually going out? So they wrote the information down. They said it. They're trying to spread this fiction. What is it they're trying to prove? And what they're trying to prove is the existence of the Department of Truth. And if you know about their whereabouts and who they are, do they even exist anymore is kind of what they're playing up here. It's very fascinating and weird. So our guys in the other room, they're kind of just like, all right, so we, we've been here for days and everything's just going crazy. I don't understand everything. These documents, whoever they're from, they're trying to tell a story. So somebody is obviously watching us. And the one guy pulls out a camera he found and they're starting to freak out like, oh man, like, what are we going to do? Like this information, even if it's real or not, the idea that it could be real is what the story is. It's not the actual information itself. It's the idea of the information that's going to make it real, going to make people think it's actual information. So what are we going to do? We have to figure out what it is. And whoever's next to us in the next room watching us and all these monitors, we got to know what they're doing. And Lee is like, all right, so Cole, you want to prove yourself to be a real member of the Department of Truth? He hands him a gun. He says, you got to take those guys out, shoot them in the head. We can't have this getting out. The truth is all that matters. If you, if you can't do it, then just fuck off. You got to get it done. This is where it goes, man. This is all because of Jeffrey Epstein pretty much. So the guys in the other room knock on the door where our guys are. Lee turns off the lights and you see Cole opens the door and he's like, hello? I'm like, hey, hey, uh, got a few questions we'd like to talk to you about. And he's like, yeah, come in. So they, he just shows them all the information. You know, there's like, here's all the monitors. Here's all the information we have on you guys. And it's not that you're just being paranoid. There's actual consequences being at play here. And there's bad shit happening. But Cole pulls out his gun. They're like, oh, that's what this is going to be. And we just see the final shot of Harvey and he's just, why'd I say Harvey? We just see the final shot of Lee. And he's just watching as Cole pulls the trigger and he does kill them. Go! This book, man, it's such a good read. It's so intense and freaky and just weird and interesting and intricate and crazy. And everything just works so good. I love it a lot. This one gets really political, really interesting. Because it's... It, 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 the worst part is and i love that this is what the book's doing it's like it's not unrealistic that all the government officials would be bought and controlled by somebody who controls the most amount of things in the world that's not unrealistic but is it the idea that it could be realistic what's making it realistic or is it that it's actually true and it's not realistic that's actually what it is it's so, it's so smart and it's like so prevalent today because you're like yeah people control everything the 1% are dicks. <laughs> I love it. This is such a fantastic and interesting read. You guys, check it out. Please give this book the love it deserves because it just it feels exactly like a Vertigo comic and I love Vertigo and I think everyone's going to like this too. It's well worth your time. It's just such an intricate and different read. Like the artwork is so gorgeous. Martin Simmons just does a fantastic job. The lettering is so jarring and creepy. 
everything about it is going to make you feel and you're just going to be like this is insane i love every second of it and i hope you guys do too so department of truth issue number four i am going to give a nine out of ten Now, thank you guys so much for watching this review. Be sure to like and subscribe to the channel. As always, you can check me out on Instagram, Patreon, Twitter, all that good stuff. And I'll catch you in the next one. Have fun. Stay safe. Good luck.